Hello everyone, welcome to Junior Church once again. I'm sure that no one can have missed the fact that the Olympic Games are taking place in Tokyo. Delayed by a year, but it's great that they've gone ahead. I've even got my Olympic t-shirt on. Have you been watching? One of the things I like about the Olympics is that you can get to see all sorts of different sports that you wouldn't normally see on television. Taekwondo, Judo, Archery, the cross-country cycle race, the table tennis. Then there's new sports too, aren't there? New this year in the Olympics. Surfing, skateboarding, karate and climbing. And then there's the more familiar sports. I love the gymnastics and the diving. I can't imagine how those athletes can throw themselves into the air or throw themselves off that 10 metre platform and make their bodies do all sorts of twists and turns as they hurtle towards the earth or to the water. I've watched the cycling road races and the triathlons. And while I admire the athletes' dedication in complete, competing several hours in the heat and humidity, I sit there in the comfort of my armchair and think, why would anyone want to do that? What's your favourite sport? By the time you see this, the Olympic Games will almost be over. But then on August the 24th, the Paralympics will begin and we'll have another two weeks of exciting sport to watch. Great Britain have had a team of 376 athletes. That's 201 women and 175 men competing in 26 sports at the Olympic. The Paralympic team hasn't been finalised yet. But it's expected that 4,440 athletes from around the world will gather in Tokyo for those games. So my question is, if you were selecting an Olympic team, who would you have in your team? Here's my team. So first of all, I thought I'd either have Jessica Ennis-Hill or Katerina Johnson-Thompson on my team as they're both really good at not just one event, but the seven events of the heptathlon. It's a bit like take one, get six free. Next, I thought I'd take Tom Daly. This is his fourth Olympic Games, so he knows what it's all about. And he's finally won a gold medal in the 10 metre synchronised diving. Next, I thought I would include Adam Peaty, now a double Olympic gold medalist, but who's been unbeaten in 100 metres breaststroke at major championships for the past seven years. This is Baroness Tani Gray Thompson, and she's a former para-Olympic athlete who won 11 gold, four silver and one bronze medal in her career. Now, as a working peer, she uses her experience and knowledge to speak on a range of issues, including disability rights, welfare reform and, of course, sport. So I think she'd be a useful support member to the team. I think we should have the fastest man to run 100 metres. This is Usain Bolt and he holds the world record. He can run 100 metres in 9.58 seconds. What could you do in 9.58 seconds? How far could you walk or run? Could you say the alphabet? Send a text message? How many people could you say hello or thank you to? Could you send up a quick prayer? Then I thought I'd take a couple of world record holders. This is Jonathan Edwards. He still holds the world record for the triple jump. That funny event when you run down the runway and then do a hop and a skip and a jump and land in the big sand pit. The world record is 18.29 metres. That's from when you take the first hop to when you land in the sun, sand. How far is that? Let's have a look. Wow. Look how far that world record is. 18.29 metres is an awful long way. From long, let's go high. This is Javier Sotomayor from Cuba and he holds the world record for the men's high jump. 
2.45 metres. How high is that? Let's have a look. This is me reaching as high as I can and I'm nowhere near where the bar would be. Can you imagine jumping over a bar that high? The final member of my team is Bear Grylls. Now, I know he's not a sportsman, but I think he'd be a useful member to have on the team in case we got into any tricky situations. Who would you have on your team? 2000 years ago, God wanted to begin to rebuild his kingdom on earth. And so he sent Jesus into the world to begin this huge task. We could perhaps say that Jesus was the head coach and as head coach, Jesus needed to choose his team. This is Jesus' team, his 12 disciples. Not a world record holder among them, not a gold medal winner, not a baroness, not a worldwide survival expert. So who do we have? First of all, we have four fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James and John, called from their boats, good at their craft, but certainly not much experience of anything else, and certainly no experience of intellectual learning. But as fishermen, they would have been used to hard work. They would be the qualities that Jesus would want, as anybody would want on their team. But of course, they didn't always get it right. We know that Peter denied Jesus three times, but Jesus forgave him and said that he would be the rock on which he would build his church. Next, we have Matthew. Now, Matthew was a tax collector and probably wasn't a popular addition to the team because as a tax collector, his job was to collect taxes from the Jews to give to the Romans. And it wasn't uncommon for the tax collectors to add a bit and put it in their own pockets. You can imagine the other disciples' response when Matthew was chosen. Why on earth has he been called to the team? But yet Jesus was prepared to take a risk. And as he called him, Matthew realised that he had failed and he was prepared to give up his old life and become a follower. Next, we have Thomas, Thomas the twin or doubting Thomas, as he's come to be known, because, of course, he said that he wouldn't believe Jesus was alive until he'd seen him for himself. But even when Thomas doubted or lacked conviction, Jesus reached out to him to restore his faith. Then there was Philip. Now, Philip was very good at bringing people to Jesus. Philip brought Bartholomew to Jesus, as we're told in John's Gospel, and he also brought the boy with the five loaves and the two fishes. Now, Bartholomew, he's sometimes known as Nathaniel, and at first, well, he wasn't really sure at all. He was a bit of a sceptic, and he said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But Jesus immediately saw his potential, just as Jesus sees the potential in all of us. that we don't hear much about is Simon the Zealot and he was what we might call an activist today. So he was likely to be a passionate person speaking up for what he thought for was right and yet he was prepared to give up his own plans to be part of Jesus plans. This is James and Thaddeus. Now we don't know much about them and the fact we don't know much about them suggests that they were ordinary people, nothing special, and yet Jesus wanted them to be part of his team as well. And finally, we have Judas. Now, we know that Judas didn't end his career as a disciple well, but Jesus must have wanted him on the team for a reason, and so he was part of those 12 disciples too. Jesus' work is still calling people today. He's still putting his team together. And you know what? I'm quite reassured that Jesus isn't calling the fastest or the strongest, the people most likely to win, the gold medal winners or the world record holders. Because if that was the case, then I don't think I'd be part of the team. Jesus' team of disciples showed that everyone has a role to play. 
Now, I may not be a university professor or have a high powered job, but then Jesus called those four fishermen, didn't he? I may be a bit of a coward at times like Peter, but Jesus still wants me in the team. I may be a bit of a sceptic like time, at times like Nathaniel, or I might have my own doubts like Thomas. But Jesus accepts those failings and he's patient with me and he reaches out to me to restore my faith. At times, I might not quite follow the rules or get my priorities wrong like Matthew. But if I'm prepared to realise when I'm wrong and say sorry, then Jesus will accept me and take me into a new life in him. I might be passionate about things like Simon the Zealot. And if I challenge that passion in a positive way, then I can be part of Jesus' plans. The Olympic Games is all about striving to be the best in the world, to come in fastest, highest, strongest or longest. But that's the world of sport and we must remember that. However, in our world today, the world that we all have to live in, so often we see those same aspirations. I must be the best. I must earn the most money. I must have the fastest car or the best mobile phone. No one else matters. That's not the world that God wants. He wants a world where everyone can live equally. And he wants to build that sort of world, his kingdom here on earth. That's the sort of world that we should want too. I want to be part of that team. Do you? So it's craft time now. And have you noticed how the Olympians all have an identity badge that they wear around their necks? So today we're going to make our own identity badge to say that we are part of Jesus' team. So these are the things you need. Some card, some scissors, some pens or some crayons, a ruler, a pencil, some glue, some string or some ribbon and a photograph of yourself. But if you haven't got a photograph, never mind, because you could always draw a picture of yourself. Draw a rectangle on your card, 18 centimetres by 13 centimetres. Cut out your rectangle. Across the top, write, I'm on Jesus' team. Stick on your photograph or to draw a picture of yourself. Write your name. On the top of the card, make a hole at each side. Thread the ribbon or string through and tie in a knot. So there we have it, our very own identity card to say that we are part of Jesus' team. Let's just finish with a prayer. Lord Jesus, we know there is still so much work to be done to bring about your kingdom here on earth. And we know that you are still calling people to your team. But we thank you that you don't want the fastest or the strongest or the bravest or the richest or the gold medal winners or the world record holders. There is a place for everyone on your team. Whoever we are, wherever we are, whatever our failings, whatever our gifts and abilities. Help us to play our part in your team to bring about your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching the Olympics and that you will enjoy watching the Paralympics in a few weeks time. I'll see you again soon. Bye.